I'm Jim Todd from RW Beckett, and this video is how to use a Beckett T501 gauge to set the electrodes. This video training is for a skilled technician showing how to set the electrodes using a Beckett T501 gauge. The viewer should be able to identify proper electrode settings by looking at the burner and set a Beckett F head in the proper position using the gauge. This video is designed for a trained, skilled technician. The technician should be familiar with modern burner operation and trade safety. Do not attempt any of these steps if you are not a trained technician. Personal and property damage, including fire loss, could be the result if you are not properly trained. The tools required to perform this task are a 5 16 nut driver, a 3 8 inch nut driver, 7 16 open end wrench, slotted screwdriver, Beckett T501 gauge, and personal protective equipment. At this point, let us show you some of the marks on the T501 gauge. The T501 gauge has a distinctive shape to it. It is set up so that you have a tapered end here. This will go against the nozzle. If you look, you will see three lines right in the center here. Those lines are to set the gap on the electrode and the reference line to the orifice of the nozzle when we're using the crosshairs that are above and below. Those crosshairs will give you the electrode positions when we're working with the electrodes and trying to set them. Part of the positions there are identified for an F, a V, and an L head. The others are identified for the AF2 and the NX. The ones that are identified for the AF2 and the NX are also your alternate positions for the V and the L heads. There are two different shrouds used on an M-tube burner. The straight shroud and the conic shroud. There are two different heads that are used, an L head and a V head. The heads may be used on the conic or the straight shrouds, either shroud. You need to understand the dimension for the Z dimension for both of them. Using a T501 gauge, you will see two triangles up on the top. The first triangle is an inch and three eighths away from the edge, and it is indicated with the S letter in the middle of the triangle. That is for the straight shroud. The next triangle is the C triangle that is at an inch and three quarters away. That is for the conic shrouds. There are two adjustment mechanisms that are used. On the locked burner, the L-head burner, we will use the one-piece escutcheon plate that is the same plate that you will use on the F-head burner. One thing that I want to caution you on, the hole in the plate is not in the center. So if you take the plate off, make certain that you make a reference on it so that you put it back on in the right position. The other plate is the two-piece plate that we are going to use with the V-heads. You will see that there is a notches on the top. There are notches on the top here that will lock into this detent right that's along here. And there is an acorn nut down on the bottom. We will only use the acorn nut during the time that we're setting the Z dimension. To set the Z dimension on the locked head straight shroud, what I will do is loosen up the spline nut, take and loosen my escutcheon plate, slide my nozzle line assembly. I will take and hold my T501 gauge in this fashion. And I will move the drawer assembly until the S triangle is flush with the end of the shroud. Putting the end of the gauge to the leading edge of the head. Once I've done that, I will tighten up my 5 16 nut on that single plate. Now anytime you're working with that single escutcheon plate, whether it's an F head or the L head, it is advised to mark your position after you've zeroed it out because you're going to have to do it again. That'll save you that step 
during the work. When I work with the V head, I have a two-piece plate. With the two-piece plate, I will loosen up my spline nut first. Take my 5 16 nut, bring the escutcheon plate out of the detent, move it to the zero position. Go into that zero notch, and once we've gotten there, tighten this up so that we're on zero on the adjustment mechanism. Now this is the only time that I work with the acorn nut. I will loosen up the acorn nut, take my T501 gauge, hold it so I'm out on the C position because it's a conic head, move my assembly until I get to the C. So the C is to the front and the leading edge of the head is touching the edge of the gauge. Now I will tighten this up. Then I will reference my OEM spec guide and look to see where the head position is supposed to be in. So let's say that I find that the head position is a V1-3. I will move the detent until I drop into the third notch. I will tighten this up. Tighten up my spline nut. Now I will commission my burner and make my adjustments with my shutter and my band until I have set it up for the proper efficiency. The same is going to hold true with the L head. Once I have completed these steps, I will now set the burners up using combustion efficiency equipment. Once you have completed your task, record all of your information, clean up the area, make certain that it cycles through on safety. Thank you for watching this video today. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content in the future.